Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and earlier today Apple held their annual Worldwide Developers Conference at which they not only announced OS X Yosemite, but also iOS 8 and released the first beta iteration of the firmware to registered developers. I have it here on my fifth generation iPod Touch, and I'm going to be running through of some of the features of the newest operating system. And to preface before I begin, I just want to say that prior to this video, I actually created one that highlighted a security flaw in the way that Apple handles beta updates. So if you're interested in learning how it's technically possible to install iOS 8 beta on a device that isn't registered through an iOS developer account, just be sure to check out that video and keep in mind it's for educational purposes only. All right, and with that out of the way, let's go over some of the awesome features of iOS 8. So first, in what Apple is calling continuity, iOS 8 devices will be be able to more efficiently interact with OS X Yosemite and vice versa. So for instance, let me give you a scenario. If you're texting one of your friends who doesn't have an iOS device and you're just sending SMS messages, well now great, you can message them through the messages app inside of OS X Yosemite because it does communicate with your iPhone and it actually sends a message through your iPhone. In addition, it can automatically start tethering if you have a laptop, for instance, so a MacBook Pro and you're out of range of Wi-Fi and you're also in close proximity to your iPhone, it will instantly start tethering for an active of internet connection and it's currently unknown if you'll be able to take advantage of tethering without any special plans from carriers but in addition you will also be able to make phone calls on OS X answer them and actually talk to people via the Mac through the connection to your iPhone also as one final piece of continuity you'll be able to pick up documents from one device to another when it detects that you're in close proximity to said device so let's say you're working on something on your iPhone you walk up to your Mac that's on OS X Yosemite, it will automatically pop up with a prompt asking you to take over that document. You'll be able to do so. It's really quite great. But beyond that, let me actually get to the things that I can show you in today's video. So in addition to the traditional multitasking, where it brings up recent and currently open applications, you also have your recent contacts as well as your favorite contacts up above. Now, because I just recently restored this iPod Touch and I'm only using it for demonstrational purposes, I only have one contact up there. But essentially you can tap on the contact and you can initiate a quick message, you can FaceTime them or you can call them if you have an iPhone or if they have an iPhone and it's a phone number. So let me go ahead and just initiate a message here and I'm going to reply. It brings up the messages app and I can simply send it as such. Now whoever you're messaging or if you're messaging multiple people, new notifications will appear as they always have. However, there is something significantly different this time around with iOS. Eight. Instead of pulling down from Notification Center and actually going inside of the message, now you have another alternative to actually reply to the people you're communicating with. Yes, that's right, Apple has finally introduced Quick Reply. So now I can swipe down on a notification and it brings up a keyboard as well as a text field. I can even send audio, which I'll get into more in a second, but let me just show you what happens when I tap that. It starts recording what I'm actually saying. It also gives you some audio waves there and it tells you how long it's running for. Now I'm just going to stop the recording and I'm not going to send that, so I'm going to tap on the X and I can just reply to it like a normal message just by typing it. So moving on, that was a great example of actionable notifications, and also developers can use Apple's new API for this to integrate that feature into their applications and to actually allow notifications to either bring up a certain part of the application, such as a shortcut without first having to launch the application and then navigating through the various panes of said application. So it's really great, and I'm very excited to see what developers introduce with this feature. And I'll actually go over some of the other developer options towards the end of this video, but let's Let's look at the messages app for now. So you will notice this definitely looks different. Starting at the bottom, we now have a new icon for the emoji section so I can send emoticons and it just looks more clean than it did previously. So let's go back to the regular keyboard here and you'll notice at the top, I have something new. These are actually predictions. So it now predicts what you're going to type. Apple's calling it their smartest keyboard ever. It learns as you type to different people and as you talk to certain people and it actually starts to adapt 
adapt to your texting habits. So if you're talking to a work colleague, it will adapt one sort of typing style, whereas it will adapt another if you're talking to a friend, for instance. So that friend, it might use the word epic or it might suggest that word, whereas when you're talking to a business contact, it would suggest anything but that word. So now let me just give a quick example. So I'm just going to type the word this and space. As you can see, I wanted to say this is predictive, but I'm not going to type all of that out. So it came up with the suggestion is. So I'm going to type predictive and we'll see where we get. Okay, well, it's just going to say predicting right now. I'm not going to go over and type all of it out. So let's just go ahead and go with this is predicting. So as you can see, it actually does work quite well. I've sent quite a few messages through this. So it's already starting to learn my typing style. I really like it. It's actually quite great. And when I delete it, you will notice that the send key gets replaced with a microphone. Now I can do a couple of things when I actually tap on this. I have some options immediately. It starts recording my audio. It's kind of the same concept as that quick reply and that actionable notification. So it's recording what I'm saying right now. If I were to just release it, it gives me a preview so I can play it or I could just swipe up from the record and to immediately send it or go to the right if I wanted to delete it. But again, because I did release, I now have these options. So I'm just going to delete it. It also has the ability to send quick pictures and video. It doesn't seem to be integrated 100% properly at this point in time. However, keep in mind that this is just the first beta. So exiting out of the messages app, that's some really cool stuff right there, guys. In addition, Photos now saves all of the images that you actually take on iCloud. So before there was a limit, well now it should in theory save all of your pictures as long as you have room in your storage on iCloud. Beyond that, the actionable notifications such as quick reply, the new keyboard, and all of the messaging features, you have the ability to take advantage of what Apple is calling family sharing. So inside of the settings app, you can go to iCloud and then from there you will be able to enable family sharing. So actually inside of the iCloud pane here, you will notice that I have the option to set up family sharing directly beneath my Apple ID. And from here, it just explains what it is. So as you can see, it says that I can share my purchased music, movies, books, and eligible apps. I can also share photos and videos that I take in a family photo stream. I can share my location with family members or those I designate to be my family members. I can also schedule various events on the family calendar and I can help members of this family circle find their devices. Now you can only share your purchases with six different members. And also if you decide to share your purchases with said members, when they actually attempt to download or install it, you will receive a prompt on your device asking if that's okay to give them permission. And if they were the ones to initially purchase it and you went to download it and you're set up through this family sharing, then they will be the ones to receive the prompt. So it's really cool and something that I've been hoping for for quite some time. It definitely seems interesting and I'm excited to see where this goes. The same thing goes with iCloud Drive. Apple's saying that any file of any kind can be stored in the iCloud Drive on all of your devices and it works with all of your files and on OS X, it actually kind of saves them as local folders and you can easily access them. It's kind of Apple's way to tackle the obstacle that is Dropbox on OS X. So it's essentially essentially their competition for Dropbox, and it really seems like it could be awesome. I'm excited to see it in OS X Yosemite. Next, Apple has introduced a new app, previously thought to have been called HealthBook. It's just health, and it allows applications that you grant access to store and archive your various health statistics. So as you can see down below in the My Health section, it gives me a few different categories. I have all diagnostics, fitness, lab results, medication, nutrition, sleep, vital signs, and I have a me section. So in addition to applications actually being able to interact and input data into this health app, it will also send specific information to physicians so long as you have it set up and you have it enabled properly and you actually grant it access. Again, all these new features, including the predictive text and typing on the keyboard, take the utmost measures to keep all of your data secured and private. And now next up, let's look at Spotlight. It's all new, redefined, and better than ever, at least according to Apple. You can now search for applications inside of Spotlight or content
content that you don't have. So as you can see, when I type in angry, it comes up with a prompt from the app store to show me angry birds. You can also do the same thing with movies and other content that you don't yet have. And it gives you suggestions such as Wikipedia entries, places nearby, trending news, and more. Now let's actually open up the angry birds app store listing really quick, just to give you guys a demonstration of it from within inside the spotlight search on iOS 8. So as you can see, it now brings up Angry Birds. It's just a quick pane, so it's actually not the App Store itself. It connects with the App Store though and returns this listing and I would be able to purchase it if I decided to, or I can actually tap the store button in the upper right hand corner and it will redirect me to the App Store. It doesn't appear to be working properly right now though. Actually, I spoke too soon. There we go. The App Store is opening and it should in theory open to the Angry Birds listing but as you can see down below at the bottom instead of the nearby tab in the middle we now have a new explore tab so when I tap into the explore tab I can now find various applications that might interest me based off of different categories so let's just go into games for instance and it will give me new suggestions maybe that I haven't thought of before so I can go to the popular section and I can see which apps are popular right now and I can maybe download an application if I decided to if, like for instance if I wanted to download two dots also inside of the search section it will now yield trending results so these are some of the things that it deems trending as you can see we have WWDC as trending because the event just concluded earlier today so I could search for WWDC just through the new trending search pane there's also so much more inside of iOS 8 I'm just going to go to the home screen now and I'm going to swipe up and show you guys the new control center it's not really that new it doesn't any additional features but some of the elements are new some of the animations are improved so as you can see when I slide now it gives me a really nice animation of the brightness over on the left and right hand sides I also noticed that the top portion here is more reminiscent of the actual brightness when you decide to close out of control center so it's just some really nice touches across the board it seems like Apple's definitely starting to refine some of the new visual elements they implemented in iOS 7 with iOS 8. Again, we don't have any new redesigns because that was the entire intent behind iOS 7. So with iOS 8, Apple's just kind of refining some of the visual elements more. And one last thing before I conclude, this section is actually being recorded after I recorded the remainder of the video. And the reason for that is twofold. The first part of it is because I actually forgot in my haste to get editing. And the second reason is that I actually need to be plugged in to take advantage of this. This is definitely a bug that I will report but as of now the new Siri features actually don't work properly without it being plugged in at least the part where I can say hey Siri hey Siri and Siri comes up. As you can see, it took a second try, but Siri did come up automatically, and it's actually dictating what I'm saying in real time. So as you can see, here we are inside of the new version of Siri. It has some additional features, such as the ability to purchase tickets through Siri itself. So it uses some of the location data to actually determine where you are to bring back show times, and then from there, you will be able to purchase tickets through Fandango, I believe. And in addition to that, it also says audio search based off of Shazam. I'm here inside of Spotify, let's bring up Siri and I'm going to select a song. All right, as you can see, it brought back the correct song inside of Siri. Let's do it now for a second time. All right, as you can see, it brought back the correct song and actually when it was bringing back the results or when it was actually processing them, it showed a little music icon so it can automatically detect when music is playing. 
So as you can see, there it is inside of Siri right now, and it brought back the same exact result. So those are some of the new Siri features. Let's continue. And those are basically all of the new and exciting features inside of iOS 8. It also has a bug reporter. So for instance, if I happen to notice something that isn't working properly inside of this beta, I can then submit it for review through my developer account. But because I'm not going to do that, let's just close out of it. Obviously that won't make it to the final production version of iOS 8 either, because hopefully if all goes well, the bugs will be worked out of iOS 8 before it goes public. And now let me briefly highlight some of the new features we can expect from developers with all of the new SDK options Apple has made available to developers. So let's switch this over with my iPad really quick and I'll be right back. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this, so let's just scroll through it quickly. All right, so Apple is now giving developers more ways to help you do more, and you meaning the developers. This is just Apple's website for iOS 8 preview, the developer API portion. So now there will be new sharing options. So for instance, as you can see in their example, you will have the ability to share things via Pinterest or really any application that you have installed that you allow permission to access various items to actually share things. Developers will also have access to the photo editing API. They will be able to implement custom actions that users perform. Notification Center will also now have widgets. So yes, developers will finally be able to develop widgets for their applications that can then be added to Notification Center. Also, third-party keyboards can now be installed and can connect to the internet to bring back different results if you give them access. Again, remember everything with iOS 8 revolves around access and user privacy. Again, there will also be a documents API for developers and there are also other APIs such as Touch ID. Again, remember everything stored locally. Apps don't have access to the secure iPhone 5S A7 Enclave that actually stores all of the fingerprint data locally. It's encrypted. Again apps don't have access to that and they won't with this new API either, but developers will enable fingerprints to do things such as login. There's also PhotoKit, a camera API, HealthKit for the Health app, HomeKit for various smart automation home devices, CloudKit, which allows developers to leverage the full power of the cloud for limited charges. There's also SpriteKit and SceneKit, which will allow developers to more easily develop casual games. And there's Metal, which which is very exciting. I'm actually thrilled to have developers implement Metal into their applications. It actually allows apps to access more of the A7 chip's raw power, and it will bring what are essentially console level games to the iPhone and iPad models, and also future devices with 64-bit processors. Now let's scroll down, and finally, as you can see, we have Swift, which is an all new programming language by Apple. It's something that developers can take advantage of to more easily build applications. So all of this makes for one really exciting WWDC. It's really great news and I personally cannot wait until iOS 8 is both available to the public and if you want to try it now, you're welcome to do so. Just be sure to follow my video that I mentioned earlier and also things like OSX Yosemite and the various APIs that developers can take advantage of and implement into their applications this coming fall. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. There's a lot of raw footage for me to edit. So once I get it out to you, it would be really awesome if you could give it a thumbs up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Also, if you're interested in earning paid apps from Apple's App Store for free legally while simultaneously supporting the developers of said applications, just be sure to visit bit.ly forward slash get free app life inside of Safari or freeapplife.com. And then once installed, download sponsored apps to earn points and then redeem said points for various prizes. Again, such as paid application codes from Apple's app store, gift cards, and electronic devices. One last time, I hope you guys like this video and you're as excited for iOS 8 as I am. I'm really excited for the iPhone 6 with iOS 8. Again, if you guys want full coverage and you want to be updated along the way when I actually release said coverage, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.